And good afternoon, everybody. I will call the Environment Committee to order. And let's do a roll call. See who's here. All right. Fredson? Here. And at this time, Councilmember Sterner has not joined us yet, but we'll watch for him. Vento? Here. Wolf? Here. Zarin? I see him speaking. I do see him. I'll acknowledge that Councilman is here. is here. You are here. Thank you. And Lindstrom. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello. Uh, okay. I'll do a quick reading of the chair's statement, which is that the chair has determined it's not practical or prudent to conduct in person meetings in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Accordingly, committee members will participate, are participating in this meeting via telephone or other electronic means, and the meeting will be conducted under Minnesota statute section 13D.021. We encourage anyone to monitor this meeting remotely. And if you have comments, we encourage members of the public to email us at public.info at metc.state.mn.us. All right. So we have a great uh, agenda before us today. Uh, we can um, approve the agenda without any objections and move on to the minutes of October 26. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? Wolf moves approval. Thanks. Second? Second by Zirin. Thank you. Roll call. Fredson? Aye. Vento? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Zarin? Aye. And Lindstrom? Aye. And, uh, and Sterner's aye too. Sterner's aye oh, as well. Thank you. You just popped in and I didn't see you do that. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome, Council Member. Okay, and that takes us to our one and only consent agenda item, which is the city of Robbinsdale's 2040 comp plan and comp sewer plan. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Wolf moves approval. Thank you. Second. Turner seconds. Roll call. Hudson. Aye. Sterner. Bento. Aye. Wolf? Aye. Zarin? Aye. And Lindstrom? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Two items on our non-consent agenda, agenda today. The first one is uh, interceptor improvement and land acquisition. Mr. Wadeen. Thank you, Chair Lindstrom and council members. Uh, my name is Tim Wadeen. I'm assistant manager with Interceptor Engineering. And I'm here to present to you on Interceptor 1MN320 improvements um, for the land acquisition business item 2021-323. Um, before I continue, I'm feeling hearing a little crackling in my headset. Is, is my voice coming through all right? Thank you. Next slide, please. A little background on the project. Um, Improvements to the 1MN320 are located in Minneapolis and are required to address poor hydraulics, uh, prevent future failures, and ensure system reliability and protect adjacent infrastructure and water bodies. The images on the right show you some photos that we've um, taken of the inside of 1MN320, condition of the existing brick pipe that's there. Um, in order to make our improvements, we do need to acquire land to implement those improvements, uh, those which will include a uh, new pipe and the construction of a lift station. Next slide, please. Our search for a suitable property will be located within the purple highlighted area. Uh, on the north side, you can see, or on the top side of the image, you can see Highway 55. Um, to the right side, the east side of the image, you can see Highway 94. Uh, so that's approximately the location of um, 
the, the property that we'll be looking for to construct our lift station. Next slide, please. Very short presentation, but uh, to summarize, our proposed action is that the Metropolitan Council adopts res Resolution 2021-40, authorizing the acquisition and condemnation of real property for Interceptor 1 MN320 improvements, MCES project number 809205. And with that, I'm available for any questions. Thanks. Any questions? If I recall correctly from the report, this is a very old interceptor. It's been there for a long, long, long time. Mr. Chair, that's uh, correct. As, as I recall, the, the interceptor was, was constructed back in the 1880-1890 um, time frame. Wow. Built to last. Any question? Uh, council member, yeah, please go ahead. Mr. Chair, um, thank you. Is this the same one that we had a company from California or someplace come in and clean it out because it had debris in it? I know one of those big old tunnels did. Um, Mr. Chair, council members, um, as I recall, yes, we did have a company come in and clean out this area. Um, so this isn't the first time that we've been down in this in this location. Um, that cleaning helped ensure that we had good flow moving through that that uh, that interceptor. Um, this is our next step in, in trying to do what we can to further improve that facility. How deep are we talking about here? Did we need to hire someone from California because it's 80 feet deep or something or deeper? I, Mr. Chair, I don't remember um, let me look here very quickly and perhaps um, Adam Gordon can to, chime to in as well. Yes, if you'd like me to respond to that. Certainly, Mr. Chair. thank you. Uh, yes, that was actually Deutsch Construction, uh, which is a Detroit, a Michigan-based firm, uh, and they have the larger contract uh, over the past three years for deep interceptor cleaning and tunnels. Uh, the size of this tunnel I believe it's 11 feet across, eight feet tall. And so those larger um, sewers do require uh, bucketing and other equipment like that, that uh, Deutsch is uh, uh, well adept at using. So that's, they've, they've had the contract. Uh, they've actually have the uh, new contract, which we awarded this, uh, this year uh, for the second phase of deep interceptor and tunnel cleaning. Uh, in Minneapolis and St. Paul. So um, I think they've been working on the MS-100 interceptor this last summer. Um, so you've you've probably heard that name, Deutsch mm. Construction, quite a bit in our pre presentations in the past. They seem to be uh, very adept at what they do. Thank you. Other questions? Or do we have a motion? Wolf moves approval. And a second. Turner seconds. All right. Roll call, please. Fredson. Aye. Sterner. Sterner. I see Aye. you're responding affirmative. Thank Aye. you. Bento. Aye. Wolf. Aye. Zarin. Aye. Lindstrom. I for me as well. Siri apparently wanted to vote as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, that's great. Uh, okay, very good. Um, and that takes us to another land acquisition project. This is the 8567 Force Main replacement at Channel Crossings. Mr. Remus, welcome back to the committee. Thank you and good afternoon, Mr. Chair, committee members. Uh, again, my name is Chris Remus and I'm an assistant manager in Interceptor Engineering. And today I'd like to present business item 2021-324, uh, land acquisition for 8567 force main replacement 
at Channel Crossings, project number 802863. Next slide, please. And just to provide a little background uh, to the committee, um, the, uh, there's three maps on the right side. The top one is the uh, two bridges I will be referencing. The uh, Hennepin County is planning on replacing both the Hendrickson and Nornberg bridges along County Road 51 in 2022. Uh, we do have the existing 8567 force main that is suspended from both of these bridges and they need to be removed and relocated prior to um, the county dropping those bridges for reconstruction. And the replacement force mains will be relocated under the Lake Minnetonka channels uh, prior to Hennepin County coming in for construction of new bridges and new easement rights are necessary to accommodate the relocated force mains under each channel. Next slide, please. So there'll be three permanent easements that we're looking for and they'll be um, required both from a residential uh, property and public entities being Hennepin County and Three Rivers Park District. Next slide, please. So the proposed action today is that the Metropolitan Council pass resolution 2021-41 authorizing the acquisition of permanent easements for the 8567 force main replacement at channel crossings, project number 802863 and to initiate condemnation proceedings if direct purchase efforts are unsuccessful. Next slide, please. With that, I can be available for any questions. Thank you. Any questions? And I may not, oh, now I can see you all. Any questions on this project? I have Jen. approval. <laughs> okay, good. We got a motion. And do uh, just before we get a second on that one, I got a quick question just in general when we're crossing channels or rivers. It, uh, most common, I imagine, is to do a, the suspended route that we're doing today. Is the second most common then to dig underneath the river? Or does it ever? Does the pipe ever just, it doesn't just lay on the bottom of the river, I imagine, all sorts of problems uh, from that, or does it? I don't really know. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, for this particular project, we would uh, be directionally drilling uh, this, so it would, um, similar to how they put in small utilities with the drilling rigs, they will, um, drill a pilot through and then we'll follow up and pull the pipe back. And that is underneath the channel. Um, there are locations where there's more conventional excavation, but it would be, um, the channel would be excavated and the pipe would be buried below the bottom of a, a river channel or a lake bed. So there wouldn't be any impediments to boating activities or anything else like that. So it's either suspended from a bridge or is underground. Underneath Correct, the, the river. Yeah. Yes. Great. Thank you. We have a motion. Is there a second? Bento seconds. Thank you. Roll call. Edson? Aye. Sterner? Aye. Bento? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Theron? Aye. And Lindstrom? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Moving right along. Uh, to our, uh, the, our first information item, uh, the Priority Waters Project. We've got a whole team of presenters here. A Welcome whole team, home. but I'm All the right. one who's going to be talking. So um, thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chair and members of the committee for the opportunity to speak with you today. My name is Emily Ressiger. I'm an environmental analyst in the water resources section of ES. I'm the project manager on this Priority Waters Project. I spoke with you back in February about this project, and I'm here today to give you an update on progress and let you know how you can help us finalize this project. Before I get started, I do want to acknowledge others who are here with me today. I'm joined by Henry McCarthy in Water Supply Planning, Eric Herberg in Water Resources, and they are both part of the core project team, as well as Judy Sventek, Manager of Water Resources Section, who's the project owner. I will be presenting, but Eric, Henry, and Judy are available for questions as needed. Next slide. 
Today, I'll be quickly recapping some of the main points of what I shared with you in February to provide needed context, but primarily I'll be updating you on the status of the project and introducing you to the outreach materials we are using to solicit broad support um, and feedback on the project from customers and partners. Next slide. Why do we need a prioritized list of water bodies? In the Metro, we have over 950 lakes and hundreds of miles of rivers and streams. As the council completes its projects and initiatives, without prioritization, it could be hard to know where to focus our efforts. Some specific examples of where prioritization are necessary are, um, our group Water Resources does significant monitoring on rivers, lakes, and streams on our own and with partners. We need to make sure that we are um, monitoring the right ones that, um, that the, the region believes should be the, our focus. Um, staff attend meetings and provide technical support on plans and projects. Are there um, some that we should be prioritizing of these um, technical, uh, of these meetings and uh, projects that we should be prioritizing first? And then finally, during ES and transit construction projects, are there certain water bodies we need to elevate in our levels of protection? Next slide. The current priority lakes list was included in the 2040 water resource policy plan. It is currently used to set monitoring and assessment priorities, especially council staff priorities for our lake monitoring program. For that priority um, lakes list, lakes were prioritized based on whether they provided high recreational value, if they were used as a water supply lake, they are used, um, if they have good water quality and whether they have wildlife significance. Next slide. For the new priority lakes list, our goal is to build on the prioritization successes of the existing lakes list while expanding to prioritize rivers and streams. In the near future, the list will be used for an analysis of whether our existing lake, river, and stream monitoring programs um, are um, using their resources most wisely. That will be followed by an investigation of whether the regional assessments we do on water quality um, adequately address our priorities. The list will also be one of the central tenets of the 2050 Water Resources Policy Plan, which is being developed now. How we craft policy around water resources should be influenced by our water priorities. Finally, as part of the Water Resources Policy Plan, we envision this list being used by other organizations to prioritize their resources. Next slide. There are different ways to prioritize waters. We could target the dirtiest waters first. We could target by water body size. We could target by number of public investments. Um, many of our um, partners and uh, state agencies and watersheds focus almost entirely on um, prioritizing by water quality and impairments. Um, however, we are taking a broader approach with this priority waters list because our regional planning work needs to support and reflect the region's values. Water bodies included in the priority waters list have been determined by our staff to be re regionally significant based on the benefits these water bodies provide. This approach supports the Met Council's mission to foster efficient and economic growth for a prosperous region, and it directly supports the five outcomes from Thrive 2040. To create the priority waters list, we've taken a data-driven approach using regional scale data sets. Next slide. We went through a long and very thorough discernment process internally to decide on our scoring categories. These categories are similar to the ones I showed in February, but we've made some modifications. So I'll just briefly walk through what each of these categories means. Drinking water protection is the likelihood that a water body may impact the quality of a regional drinking water source if it's degraded. Recreation and tourism is the ability of a water body to support visitors and different types of recreation on the water or on shore, such as swimming, boating, fishing, or walking along an adjacent trail. Healthy habitat is the likelihood that a water body provides good habitat for native wildlife and vegetation to live and thrive. Tranquil connection is an estimate of a water body's potential to provide a tranquil outdoor experience free from distractions of human activity. Equity is an estimate of a water body's um, accessibility to communities that may generally have more limited access to the benefits water bodies can provide. In, 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 uh, industry and utility is the degree to which a water body provides or supports utility and economic benefits for the region. Finally, science and education is the extent to which a water body supports use for scientific studies or environmental education. In addition to the seven categories shown, we identified two additional categories as having important benefits. They were not used for scoring due to lack of quantitative and comprehensive data sets. They are culture and history, which is an estimate of a water body's cultural and historical value for people of the region, and food provisioning, which is the ability of a water body to provide food. Next slide. Um, that last slide is where I left you in February. 
Since then, we've gone through a huge effort to process almost 100 regional data sets. Scores were calculated from using those data sets in each of the seven scoring categories and then combined into an overall score for each water body. Waters qualify for the list based on top overall and or category scores. This has been an, a very iterative process. We have adjusted scores and category weights many times to reach our final draft list. The priority waters list actually has two sub lists. Lakes are on one list and rivers and streams on another because their scoring methods were a little bit different, so they weren't directly comparable. Currently, the lakes list has 156 waters listed and the rivers and streams has 78 waters. This is close to 20% of the lakes and 20% of the rivers and streams of the metro. Next slide. So the project has now entered the outreach phase and we want this list to be widely adopted, used and understood. So we are reaching out to a variety of stakeholders. The outreach materials I'm about to show you are already publicly available and are being shared with internal staff this week. We are planning to share with external partners immediately after Thanksgiving. So we do ask that you not disseminate the materials widely outside the council until after Thanksgiving because we are taking the next two weeks to do some final revisions of the materials. Um, the audience for this effort is just about everybody who helps to manage water resources, internal staff, external partners who are city, county, watershed, state level, um, also, ES specific groups, including MOSAC and TAC and the newly formed Water Resource Policy Plan Advisory Group. But this product isn't just for scientists and engineers. It really is for anybody who works um, with and um, manages water. So I strongly encourage council members to review it and we will be sending it to city council members as well. Next slide. Our outreach effort is centered around a standalone website, which is available for you to visit with the link provided. Um, the website walks through the project just as I have today, and then it shares the draft list before asking for feedback. Feedback can be provided through a survey that's included or individuals can contact me directly. The survey focuses on the categories we use, the water bodies selected, and how the list might be used. So it asks things such as, did we include the right categories? Um, what, what's missing? Are the priority waters what you expected? Um, or are we missing a key water body or is a water body listed that you don't believe is a priority in your region? Um, and are there other data sets we should have considered? Did we score a water body wrong, such as did we miss a beach on a specific lake? Um, finally, we'll ask if, they, um, if they're likely to use the list or some of the methodology and if, it's, if there's any way we can make it more useful to them so they're more likely to use it. Next slide. Um, going to the website right now is uh, a little too confusing, so I do have the link in there and I encourage you guys to check it out, or you all to check it out. But, um, Here's a screen grab just um, so you get a sense of what it looks like. It is a little out of date now. Um, our goal is to include a lot of information, but parcel it out in bite-sized chunks. So anybody who wants a high level understanding of the project can get that, but there's also technical details um, once you dive in. We've spent, we, um, we've kept a lot of the material in these um, closed accordions. Those are the um, baby blue sections at the bottom. Um, for anyone reviewing the list, I recommend um, reviewing the sections, that the introductory text, um, especially the light blue section, um, the very light blue section called Tips on Providing Feedback. Then I recommend looking at the, the sections, the Priority Waters List Approach, the Water History and Context, Scoring Categories, and the Draft Priority Waters List, and then visiting the last section to provide feedback. There is a section called Data and Methods that gets pretty technical quite quickly, so I only recommend spending time there if you're interested in the particular data sets we used or details on why a certain water body qualifies for the list. Next slide. I just wanted to briefly walk through some highlights of the site. Um, our team member, Henry McCarthy, is responsible for the water history and context section, which is where we remind our audience that the Twin Cities is unique for a number of reasons. It has its own unique topography and ecology. It also has its own complicated history. The Dakota people once lived here and view much of the water here as sacred, but they were almost entirely removed from this area, oftentimes forcibly. Many water bodies in the Seven County Metro have Dakota names. Some, like Bidet Makaska, are having their Dakota names restored. Today, people from all over the world live in the Twin Cities, some having lived here for generations while others are recent arrivals. Different communities may value our water bodies differently. With that in mind, the Priority Waters List is our best attempt to use the data we have now to prioritize our resources, but determining the value of any one lake or stream is extremely complicated. The Priority Waters List highlights the water bodies that currently supply the greatest benefits to our region based on the data we have. This will almost certainly change and the list will need to be updated. Next slide. 
in the draft priority wirelessly section of the web page, there is a table like the one shown for both lakes and rivers and streams. So there's two separate tables where you can scroll through the list, type in part of a water body name or all of the water body name, or you can search by county. Um, then there's also a map like the one shown at right, although we have changed the base map, it looks a little different, that includes both lakes and rivers and streams on one map. So you can use that map to pan and scroll, um, zoom in and select um, waters which are shown in blue and that will tell you what their names are. Next slide. So to wrap up, um, we are already in the outreach phase of the project as I've shown and we anticipate that ending by the end of 2021. Again, I'd encourage you, council members, and your colleagues to review the materials and provide comments. You know your districts very well and know how the waters in your district are valued and used. As I said, we will be sending out an announcement of the availability of the draft list after Thanksgiving. All council members will be included on that announcement. At that point, I would encourage you to forward the information to those you think would benefit from reviewing it. After the feedback period closed, we will take all of the feedback gathered and make changes to the list as needed. We will then finalize the list and move forward with publishing it and letting people know it is available to use. Next slide. With that, I'd be happy to take any questions or comments. Thank you. Great presentation. Thank you, Emily. Um, any questions or comments? You know, without uh, a chance to look at the website, um, Yet, uh, I suspect you do this, but I, in any sort of communications, I would make it really clear what additional benefits a lake or a river or a stream receives when they're on the priority list and what happens if a lake, a river, a stream is not on the priority list. If they're not on the list, they will receive, they are unlikely to receive such and such additional resources provided by da 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 to improve the lake river stream. If they're on the list, they are more likely to what have you. Just make Thank it you. real real make it real clear for folks like a city council member who, you know, doesn't follow this stuff day in, day out. Really what what are the ramifications for for the list? And I like I like the fact that you uh, made clear that other organizations beyond the Met Council use this list to make decisions. I think that's an important point as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, that's really good feedback, um, and I agree. We've tried really hard to to say what it means to be on the list. Um, one thing that's a little bit tough is we. Um, you know, what we've used it for in the past has been pretty narrowly focused on, on monitoring and we're hoping that it's going to be used um, more broadly for grant targeting for um, planning purposes. And so it's a little we're trying to guess how, you know, in five years we may be using it. Um, and so it's been a constant discussion on our team back and forth about which comes first, how you're using it or the list. And we've tried to set up in a way that will be flexible for a number of uses. And um, I, I think that's really good advice to, to go back and make sure we've made it clear what it means to be on the list. So thank you. Councilmember Wolf. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I did take some time to look at the website before the, the meeting today, and I was surprised at how many are named are called unnamed stream or unnamed creek. So the the map is helpful for seeing where those unnamed ones are and also to see which uh, water bodies weren't selected because they're still there. They just aren't as bright a blue as the the others. Thank you, Mr. Chair um, and, and Council Member Wolf. Um, uh, it's a really good point. And actually, um, when I mentioned or uh, that um, you know we're not releasing it to the public until after Thanksgiving, one of the things we want to do is go back and take a look at those streams. Um, this is one of these situations where um, we were limited by the data we have. We were using a DNR data set of, of streams in the Metro and a number of them show up as unnamed. Um, however, when you go through watershed plans, you'll often find that watersheds do refer to them by certain names. Um, lakes, we in this state do a much better job of tracking what the official 
um, DNR name is and then what some alternative names are that maybe it's not officially known by and streams that's less so I'd, I'd really like to recommend to the DNR that that be something that they work on and we can help them with that. Anyway, in the next two weeks, we are planning on going through every watershed plan, pulling out, um, finding the streams that, that they think are important and making sure that their names are reflected. We're hoping in the long run, we're gonna have a lot fewer unnamed streams because that's not very useful to look at on a list. I, I totally agree. Um, but thank you so much Great. for looking at, at the list. I like the approach here you're using. It's. Um, it's a little bit more messier than just saying we're going to take the 950 dirtiest lakes and streams and rivers. That's that's what we're going to be using. You could have a lake that's um, poor quality and you know two lakes, one that's poor quality, one that's nicer quality, better quality, but this one has uh, two endangered species in it. Of fish, and this one has sunnies and bass, and that's about it. Or and this one is on a culturally uh, sensitive area, or um, uh, a great recreation area, or something like that, and make the call that way. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. That that's certainly been our goal. Um, I I do want to point out. I think when I came in February, we talked a bit about. Um, water quality. And while we did not explicitly call out good water quality as one of our categories, um, good water quality does factor in in several mm -hmm. ways. Um, it, it To be um, a higher recreation lake, you have to have um, certain, uh, it's like a it's called trophic state index, and it's a way of looking at um, uh, how productive a lake is, how how much um, algae it has. And so we did look at that um, trophic state index value in determining whether a lake had high recreation. And similarly for healthy habitat, we looked a lot at what's, like you just mentioned, what species are found in a lake or stream and what species are found is very closely correlated often to the quality. Um, so there are several places um, internal to uh, the categories that we included water quality and, and that does come away. But um, yes, it is a messy way of, of looking at this. And, um, you know, we feel like we, the, this region and the state have spent so much energy um, collecting and uh, really robust data sets that tell us about what is happening in the world. And um, we felt like it was time to use them, um, but it has been more challenging than just picking a few. Other questions or comments? Um, and Mr. Chair, members of the committee, I do want to say that um, my intention today was not to come and have you uh, fully reviewed the list. Obviously, um, you just got the materials recently. I, I was more, um, the goal was just to give you an introduction to our, our um, materials and our process and um, I'm happy to answer any questions or um, take your feedback uh, via email or a phone call if, if um, you'd prefer at a later date. So we just wanted to get you set up to, to be able to use the materials. Perfect. And we will do our part by <clears throat> once we get the, the message, the outreach message from you, we'll we'll blast it out to our networks. <laughs> Wonderful. Greatly appreciated. All right. Well, thanks again. Thank you so much. Lisa. Moving right along. Yeah, this is a, a great item. Um, I hope that you're as excited as I am to see how strong our intention is to engage more of the region and, and having awareness, but also to provide feedback on the environmental challenges, especially as we're heading into the update of the Thrive Framework. It's really important that we do a really good job at that and your feedback you're, you're the group that, that we look to to get um, the best insights in terms of how we can increase our reach as we try to get more input and outreach to happen. And of course, we can celebrate that we have better technology even in terms of tools than we did the last time the, the um, Thrive update was done. So I think this uh, next round is going to have the potential to be pretty outstanding. And uh, 
we're ready to do a really good job with you on that. So thank you for being partners with us on that. And don't hesitate to give us feedback at any point because you're out there in those communities and, and representing the council, but we want to um, benefit from what you learn as you do that work. Thank you. You can count on it. <laughs> uh, any other reports from that's, that's complete for today, other than it's my birthday, so I'm going to go Ooh. have a really good dinner. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have been part of many a Zoom call where we sing happy birthday, and it quickly goes uh, downhill very quickly. So uh, we'll spare you since this yep. is being recorded and will live online forever. Yeah, <laughs> please don't, don't make us sing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, happy birthday to you Thank and you. everybody. Happy birthday. We are adjourned. Yes. Happy birthday, Lisa. Thank Have you. fun. Have fun celebrating. I will. Thank you.